Have you heard of space internet? 4,000 small satellites orbiting Earth, beaming down high-speed broadband to the most remote nooks on the planet, reaching billions. SpaceX, Virgin Galactic, Boeing, and Airbus are all racing to make space internet a reality. This scheme depends on CubeSats, low-cost bite-sized satellites that many view as the future of telecommunications and deep space exploration. But these CubeSats have a big problem. Conventional rockets with their huge chemical fuel tanks are too large and too powerful for CubeSats, which are as tiny as Rubik's Cubes or small printers. It'd be like strapping your bicycle to a monster truck. So CubeSats are currently built without propulsion and can't be controlled once in orbit. This restricts CubeSats to lower orbits, safe from collisions with normal satellites. After a few months, the CubeSats fall back to Earth. What CubeSats need to stay in space are mini-boosters, and scientists are racing to build them. And if you look inside this chamber, we can show you one, capable of blasting them deep into the cosmos. I grew up in Mexico, and uh, I was very young. I watched Carl Sagan's uh, Cosmos uh, as probably every other child in my generation. The cosmos is also within us. We're made of star stuff. We are a way for the cosmos to know itself. That inspired me uh, to uh, study the stars, to work on things that leave the Earth. Paula Lozano is the director of the Space Propulsion Lab at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He's found a solution to the CubeSat problem, and the idea of fueling his mini-rocket is simpler than you might think. What we can do is to rub the plastic on any fabric, really, and you can put a little bit of liquid on your finger and then get it close, and you will see the liquid flying, producing a little cone, and then flying to the plastic. That's static electricity, and it's not just tugging at the droplet. Look more closely, and you'll see the static creates a spray of charged molecules called ions. Lozano's tiny rockets, which are the size of quarters, generate these ion sprays. They don't produce a lot of force, uh, so it's always less than um, the weight of a mosquito. This may sound wimpy, but even a small action creates a reaction in the frictionless vacuum of outer space. Move ions in one direction, and a CubeSat will move uber fast in the other. The best uh, chemical rocket uh, will produce an exhaust of particles that move uh, at about uh, 4,000 meters per second. And an ion engine can go much higher. It can reach uh, 40,000, 50,000, or even more uh, meters per second. Up to 111,000 miles per hour more than enough to stay in orbit around Earth, or even blast off to Mars. Lozano's ion engines look like computer microchips. They contain a grid of 500 needles, each a solar-powered, custom-built nozzle for spewing ions. My name is Katherine Miller. I am a second-year PhD student here. I'm also a NASA Space Technology Research Fellow. They're electrochemically etched and chemically roughened to uh, make the needle tip it's extremely, extremely sharp. And so from there, you can dip the ionic liquid onto the surface and produce an ion beam that way. Latch on a fuel tank the size of a sugar cube, and you're almost ready for liftoff. What we have in here is a relatively big vacuum chamber. You can see what we have right now is uh, a little satellite uh, that is actually magnetically levitated. We have uh, tiny little thrusters in there that can move the satellite and rotate it around. And uh, we can investigate then how the thrusters behave, how do they affect the motion of the satellite while the vacuum chamber is closed. Ion engines aren't new. NASA's Dawn mission, which hopped its way to the asteroid series, would have been impossible without its high-velocity ion engine. But the Dawn mission cost half a billion dollars. Commercial CubeSats can cost as little as $100,000, and this price is dropping. Even children are building CubeSats at their elementary schools. Sure, you're thinking an individual CubeSat can't perform as many operations as a big mission satellite, but there is strength in numbers. Instead of you know, going to an asteroid every five, 10 years, in the traditional way, release uh, a fleet of these tiny little uh, CubeSats and visit 100 asteroids. Doing so could prevent Armageddon. Some of these asteroids, especially the very small ones, they have the potential to collide with the Earth. They won't kill the Earth, but they can kill a city. By launching a fleet of CubeSats, scientists could learn the chemical compositions of these city killers. That could be key to destroying them. 
an asteroid made of silicon would be much tougher to stop than one made of iron. Meanwhile, closer to home, Lozano's ion engines could install CubeSats into shiftable orbits for a space internet. So from a truly worldwide web to stopping asteroids, Lozano's mini thrusters hope to carry CubeSats to infinity and beyond. Until next time, I'm Seacon Akban, and this is Science Scope from the PBS NewsHour.